I have been involved in renewables, I suppose, for, uh, since about 2009. Uh, and I think uh, what we're talking about here in the renewables network uh, is something that we all do. Um, energy awareness has been something that uh, certainly has driven our agenda in the Northwest. And I became involved in the Northwest and renewables network uh, through the Northwest Partnership Board, which has spawned from the Northwest Regional Cross Border Group. Uh, and again, the Northwest Partnership Board set up uh, a renewables and green economy working group. Uh, and I'm very privileged to have here one of those members of that group, a champion uh, from Derry City Council, Leo Strawbridge. And I'd like to acknowledge Leo's work in Derry and with regard to the uh, development of an energy strategy for the Northwest. Uh, I suppose Leo is a, an exemplar um, for energy awareness in Derry City Council, and I'm sure we have ex similar exemplars in both Maherfelt, Limavady, uh, and Donegal and Straban. We have Brian Simpson and certainly Straban, uh, and we have Joanne here who has set up and has been the coordinator um, for RENNET. I think uh, networks are very important. Networks bring people, which is the community and business together to allow things to happen. And I think it's from that point of view that I'd like to sort of present, make this presentation. And it's really a story of where we are uh, and uh, what we can do in the future. Okay, so why renewables? Well, the compelling uh, thing for renewables is simply climate change. And how do we, uh, in Europe and Ireland, how do we try and meet that challenge of having uh, basically a society, uh, a country, a world that is sustainable into the future. Uh, and I think renewable energy is one of those solutions. Uh, and what we have here is a unique group of people in RENNET that are trying to do that on the ground in local communities. This is the supply chain for gas as it currently stands. And you can see there are a lot of suppliers for gas in Europe at the moment, okay? Well, the striking thing changes by 2030. You can see that we have Russia, uh, and that pipeline goes through the Ukraine, and we knew, know of all the geopolitical reasons there uh, and the instability of that. So energy security as well as climate change are two things that are very important for Ireland. In Ireland, 90% of our fossil fuels, our, our energy is imported, which means we have a serious uh, energy security supply problem. And one of the ways that we can manage that is to have a better energy fuel mix. Uh, and this is the future for Ireland, uh, Great Britain, and the rest of Europe, to have a mix of wind, ocean, gas, nuclear, should I say it, in Ireland is back into the debate. Um, but we are good at importing nuclear power through our uh, distribution lines with the UK, and possibly in the future through uh, France. We have peat and we have biomass. A number of these renewable energies are really useful to us in that they are homegrown and they have a significant multiplier effect for local communities. If we look at biomass, if we have local grown wood, we have local processed forests, maintained forests, uh, and then we process it here and we use it here. Not only do we have our own sustainable resource if we continue to, uh, to basically replant trees as we use them, we have local communities uh, with local employment, uh, and basically we have salespeople, operations, maintenance, foresters, we have haulage people, everyone is involved. So therefore, we, we have what I would call a sustainable community. So why the Northwest? This is um, a little clip I took from the Atlantic Ocean Energy Alliance. It's another network of people on the west coast of Ireland, uh, from Cork right through here to Donegal. And we see that in Europe, we are uh, part of a population of some 350 million. So that energy requirement in Europe is huge. Uh, and we have a potential here in Ireland to be part of that mix, not only for our own use, but for the use, European use as well. And that is a question that I think uh, we as a nation uh, or as an island need to sort of address and answer and question ourselves as to what we can do not only to help ourselves, but to help others in the European community. We have a lot of offshore resources here in Donegal and Derry. And when I was speaking to Leo earlier on, we looked at the Donegal, Straban, Derry, Limavady, Maherfelt. And at one stage, the Straban, Derry, Limavady, Maherfelt was all supposed to be one council area in the north. 
Uh, it's fortunate or unfortunate it's now just Derry and Strabane, but uh, in reality, if you look at that coastline between Derry, um, Donegal and Antrim, we have a significant coastline and a significant natural resource, both in wave and tidal into the future. So this is a vision of 2030 from the Atlantic Ocean Energy Alliance. And really, I suppose when we look at what's happened in Ireland over the last uh, summer in particular, we've, we've seen a lot of people who have objected to the development of wind farms in the Midlands and this energy bridge into the UK. I often say to my students, and I've had this debate with a number of people in the past, um, what if the Texans or the Saudis or even the people in uh, the UK only produce enough gas or oil for their own use, where would we be in Ireland? We have a significant natural resource in terms of our wind, uh, our wave, and potentially tidal into the future. And there's no doubt in my mind that as a country and as a people, we need to consider not only developing it for our own use, but for the use of all the peoples, uh, our neighboring, neighboring country in terms of GB and in Europe itself. So the potential is there, not only for generation of energy and production of energy, but all the offshoots that go with that. Okay? We can end up manufacturing and producing sales, production, all of that really creates a sustainable um, resource and sustainable communities. So here is the local uh, vision of what we have. We have Loch Foyle, we have Innistra Hall Sound, we have Tory Island for Wave, we have Aaron Moore for Wave, and we have Kelly Beggs for Wave. What we see at the moment um, through the SEAI is that we have an offshore test site uh, off County Mayo, and that's where they will deploy, uh, put metal in the water, so to speak, uh, for testing of wave devices. It is hoped through uh, the vision that we have for Donegal and the Northwest that Donegal and the waters around Donegal could be the test site for tidal energy uh, and therefore the gateway to Europe for potential tidal energy uh, and sales and manufacture of tidal devices uh, in, in European waters. That project is something that has spawned uh, from this regional, uh, you know, this uh, Renewables and Green Energy Working Group, um, as, which is part of the Northwest Partnership Board, um, which is part of this alliance between Donegal County Council and our cross-border partners in Derry and Strabane. So this is a tidal device, and you may say to yourself, well, what's the point of a tidal device? This device can go into very shallow water. Um, one beautiful thing about the tide is, we, relatively speaking, we know when it's coming and we know when it's going. It's relatively predictable, unlike the wind, which is a lot of variability. And I suppose energy storage is gonna be one of those issues that we have into the future. But in a tidal device like, like this, we would hope that we would be able to attract, if we were the test bed for, for uh, Ireland and for Europe, that we would um, uh, attract a cluster of manufacturing research and basically uh, community development. Not only do you need uh, to manufacture the devices, the tidal devices, the wave devices, or wind, and unfortunately, that's probably something that we've lost. By not having an energy bridge in the Midlands, we lose the potential um, to have su sufficient critical mass to, in, to enable us to manufacture wind turbines in Ireland. However, what we are very good at is we are very good at the sea. And if we look at the two, two strategic ports that we have uh, in this northwest uh, part of Ireland, which is uh, east of the, or west of the Ban and north of the Dublin-Galway line, uh, we have Killybegs Port and South Donegal, and we have the Derry port. And we have the potential there through our natural industries to continue to develop um, boats and other uh, related uh, projects uh, that are in ocean energy. And I think that's where our future lies in developing um, our own natural resources um, at the same time using them and building and manufacturing these devices at home rather than abroad. This is uh, something that is very like Rennet, uh, and I suppose this is where it's coming to with regard to the supply chain. This is Ocean Energy Ireland. Um, some of you may or you may not know about it. It's uh, a new project led by SEEI, and we were fortunate to meet uh, a very influential guy, a guy 
uh, who's head of the emerging technologies, a guy called Declan Mealy uh, from the SEI. And he suppose he made me smile because I, so, I, I believe for the first time in a long time that the Northwest has been put on the map with regard to ocean and renewables development in this, uh, this certainly this country in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I think we got a little bit lost, a bit like the people in Derry and Strabane, they got a little bit lost, they weren't part of um, uh, the East Coast Belfast and we weren't part of Dublin. And Declan said a very interesting thing to me one day when we were having a chat about tidal. Um, he says, Donegal and Killy Beggs will be the gateway to the ocean. And I think that's the way we need to look at ourselves. We need to be the gateway to ocean energy and, and from Donegal and Derry needs to be the gateway uh, and Belfast the gateway to the ocean on the north east coast as well. So the potential there is huge. Uh, on the island of Ireland, we're talking about 50 gigawatts, 15 billion euro of investment, leading to approximately 70,000 jobs. They are numbers that are basically founded through research uh, uh, through SEEI. So the potential for developing ocean energy is massive. Now that is not a short-term strategy, that is a long-term strategy. Short-term, if, if we're lucky in Donegal, we will have demonstration sites. And that would be my vision for this region uh, in the, certainly the next five years, to have a reasonable test site of tidal arrays and the potential then to go to manufacturing uh, into the future and become the gateway not only to Ireland but the gateway to Europe. But this is the one, uh, this is the supply chain for biomass, for wood chip, and I think this is where we are here and now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we can grow a local forest and Ireland is, uh, I suppose, lucky but not blessed. Uh, we have a very good um, growing regime in Ireland, uh, better than most places in Europe. However, we only have about 12% national coverage of forestation in Ireland. It's worse in Northern Ireland, so I won't mention the figure, but it's pretty poor. The potential uh, under the recent plan is to grow that to about 18%. Now, you could say that uh, that's positive, and it is positive, but it's not near enough. If we grow local forests, and Donegal uh, again is lucky in that it has 14% of forestation in Ireland, um, you have the foresters, you have min maintaining, cutting, felling trees, you have people harvesting, you have haulage people, you have got renewable heat, and you've got renewable electricity, and the potential into the future for biofuels. So basically, trees and forests mean huge potential for basically sustainable energy and effectively sustainable communities. And I think if we don't take the community uh, into each of these contexts with regard to renewables, then we have missed the boat. And I suppose I'd like to pay tribute to another network that was formed here in Donegal, the D Donegal Wood Growers Association or Woodland Owners Association, headed by John Jackson. And this, like RENNET, uh, is a, a group of people like-minded that want to work together to develop the supply chain. I think RENNET really is not the end here, but is the beginning. Um, Brian Motherway, the CEO of SEI, has basically said that over the next eight years we're going to need to double uh, the amount of renewable energy we use in order to meet our 2020 targets. So that's biomass, that's wind, uh, that's wind wave and tidal, it's hydro, it's co-firing of the peat power stations, co-firing of the coal-fired power stations. It's reducing our reliance on uh, imported fossil fuels. All of these things need to happen for us not to incorporate more carbon taxes. And this brings me to uh, an initiative in the USA. It's the main wind industry initiative. It's led by a guy called Paul Williamson. And I think this is possibly where RENNET could go from here to the future. And what have they done? They did a full supply chain analysis and industrial asset mapping. Um, much of the work that you've already done through RENNET uh, is already available. So it's a matter of deciding where you as a group of people, as a community called RENNET, want to go into the future. And what they did, uh, and much of this work is possibly done already, but it may require some more work. And this is done for wind. 
They identified companies providing product and services to wind and ocean, and you already are the companies providing product to the renewable industry. Okay, so you have the potential to grow further in renewables in the green economy. Um, you are the active companies, uh, and you basically want to look at, and Seamus mentioned it earlier on, the transferable skills, the working and the collaboration together in order to basically achieve more, to get that synergy. So they identified all these companies, they set up a database, and they run a database, and it was one of the things that we noticed as part of the Renewables and Green uh, Energy Working Group was that communities and people in general, uh, the level of energy awareness is not sufficient enough for them to take up all of the feasible grants and make their homes more efficient, their businesses more efficient. And if your home and your business is more efficient, your costs are less, therefore in the business context, you can make more profit or you can be sustainable. In terms of the individual, if your home is more fuel efficient, or you use more fuel efficient uh, devices, whether it be biomass or just merely putting in better windows or better insulation or putting up photovoltaics, again, you're reducing your operational costs on a daily basis, which means you can afford to live. So they set up the database. So the database and the model for the database is already there and I invite you to, to go to the main wind industry initiative com and have a look at their database and what I suppose the question I would pose is is consider where you want to be in the next five years as a grouping and look at ways at how you can get there I believe that what the model based on the wind main wind industry initiative and their database is something that you should look at closely and again everyone is listed in the database so they know what their capabilities uh, their context is uh, and this is open then to the full public to increase public awareness. So RENNET, <clears throat> in conclusion, RENNET is only the beginning. For the people of Derry, Donegal, Limavady, Maharafelt, Straban, um, you need to keep working together, you need to keep building and maintaining your relationships, and in building these networks, it's not a business expense, it's an investment. It's an investment in your future as a business, in the community's future, uh, and the enterprise in general. So I'd ask you to complete the chain, invest in your own people, invest in your own business, and make our communities more sustainable. Thank you very much.